Hello everybody and welcome to our first case study. This is going to be a patient presenting with knee pain and swelling. If you haven't had the opportunity yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the i button on the upper right hand corner. I appreciate all the support that I can get. All right, we've got a 51-year-old Hispanic man presenting to the ED complaining of left knee pain and swelling. It began six hours ago and has gradually worsened. He describes the pain as sharp and constant and has difficulty putting weight on the affected knee. He's had episodes like this before in his knee, but not as severe. He denies injury. He has no other affected joints. He's monogamous with his wife and denies alcohol, tobacco, and drug use. Vitals, blood pressure mildly elevated, heart rate mildly elevated, respirations 14, temperature uh, mildly elevated at 100.6 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so if you are um, taking step two, they're probably going to ask you at this point, what is the most likely diagnosis? Or more likely, they'll ask you, which of the following is the best next step in the management of this patient? If you're taking step three, they may ask you that, or they may ask, um, they may they may give you the uh, the certain findings and then ask you uh, what's the best first step in management, or they may, uh, if you're doing a clinical case scenario, uh, you're going to need to know whether you go straight into any kind of treatment, which typically is not the case unless they're unstable, uh, or um, if you do go on to do a physical exam like you should, uh, what or what are the organ systems that you're going to do? You know, you got general, cardiovascular, abdominal, neurologic, etc. Okay, so we go on to do our physical exam. General appearance, he's well-developed, well-nourished, mildly overweight, uncomfortable due to the knee pain, chest is cleared auscultation, cardiovascular, normal rate and rhythm, no murmurs, abdomen, non-tender, non-distended, normal bowel sounds, liver and spleen not palpable, and then extremities. Uh, so this is important uh, because we're dealing with a swollen knee. You need to examine the extremities, not only to look at the affected joint, but to look for possibly any more affected joints, maybe they're not particularly painful, but they're swollen. Um, so you, you want to look for, uh, you want to look at the, the normal extremities as well. So we find that the left knee is swollen and there's a limited active range of motion due to pain. The right knee and the upper extremities are normal and there's intact peripheral pulses. Okay, so now what? So if you're doing clinical case scenarios, at this point you're going to formulate your differential and then um, also uh, order exams, uh, order tests based on your differential. So anytime you've got a patient with a monoarticular arthritis or also called monoarthritis, there are five big things that need to be in your differential. And I put them right here. So gout, pseudogout, those two are crystalline arthritides. Uh, septic arthritis, which of course is an infection, very, very common cause of monoarticular arthritis in young people, Lyme disease, and trauma. Now, because he's got uh, swelling, but also, you know, redness of the skin, uh, it could be cellulitis, less likely, but a possibility. Osteomyelitis is a possibility. It could be, uh, not necessarily referring, but the pain could be appreciated at the joint, even though it's the bone that's infected. And then, of course, rheumatologic disorders like lupus, RA, psoriatic arthritis. This is something we'd probably see in a younger person early in the morning um, and typically involving multiple joints, asymmetric involvement, and usually the smaller joints. So that's less likely. Okay, what are we going to do now? Um, so you may pause and uh, write down uh, what tests you're going to order. Okay, so we are going to order an x-ray of the left knee. Anytime you've got a swollen and painful joint, you want to get an x-ray of that joint. We're going to get a synovial fluid analysis. This is far and away the most important test that you can order in a patient with a swollen joint. So you're going to do a gram stain, crystal, cell count, and culture, and you're going to need to know you're, when you're taking CCS, it's not just going to say synovial fluid analysis. You need to know 
all four of those. Fortunately, when you type in synovial fluid, you'll see gram stain, crystals, cell count, culture, and you're just going to order all of those. Uh, we'll get basic routine labs, CBC, BMP. Uh, we really want to check renal function in a patient with suspected gout. Uh, liver function tests, serum uric acid, and urinalysis. So you can see we're really honing in on gout, but some of these uh, are going to be important for pseudogout, like the urinalysis, and, um, and then also um, really that synovial fluid analysis is going to really tell us a lot as to what kind of arthritis this is. Okay, so we got the x-ray here. You can see a fairly normal looking x-ray, a little bit of soft tissue swelling here, and what appears to be some mild degenerative changes of the femur, or I'm sorry, of the tibia. So uh, these here are bone spurs, and they are pretty typical in osteoarthritis. Now, is this osteoarthritis? No, osteoarthritis is not red and hot and swollen. Osteoarthritis is painful, but there's typically no uh, significant swelling and definitely you're not going to have a fever with it. It also doesn't come on out of nowhere either. So our synovial fluid analysis, we had a negative gram stain. Crystals, negatively birefringent needle-shaped crystals. Boom, diagnosis. Elevated cell count, culture is pending. CCS will never give you the results of culture because they take several days. CBC shows a mild leukocytosis. BMP and liver function tests are within normal limits. Uric acid is elevated and the urinalysis is within normal limits. So the diagnosis here is gout. We can make that diagnosis uh, based on the needle-shaped, negatively birefringent crystals in the synovial fluid. So the medical management for gout is going to be NSAIDs. That's the cornerstone of your initial management. Do not go for uh, probenicid or allopurinol. That's for chronic management. Colchicine would not be a wrong answer, but we don't really use colchicine too much anymore. It's more second line. Prednisone is a possibility. Now, when would we want to use prednisone? And this can be intra-articular, it can be intramuscular, it can be oral. When would we want to use prednisone? We would use prednisone if the patient can't tolerate NSAIDs. So if they have peptic ulcer disease, we may go to prednisone. We may also go to prednisone if the patient has been on an NSAID, but it hasn't worked. Uh, if you're taking CCS, you want to know to advise the patient, no alcohol. Alcohol worsens gout. Limit red meat consumption. Meat contains purines, which ultimately will become uric acid, and weight loss. You will begin allopurinol, or really um, you could do allopurinol or probenicid depending on uh, something we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, after several weeks. It is not a treatment for acute gout flares. You've got to know that. Disposition, patients with severe gout flares uh, are typically going to be admitted. So to follow up um, later, once they're discharged, 24-hour uh, collection for uric acid, we want to differentiate them. Are they an under-excreter or are they an over-producer? Um, and then at that point, we can initiate urate-lowering therapy. Typically, this is reserved for repeat attacks. Um, so if they're an over-producer, uh, then we would do allopurinol. If they're an under-excreter, we would do, do probenicid, and we could also order a dietary consult. So the principle of management of gout, number one, treat the acute attack, typically with an NSAID. Number two, provide prophylaxis to prevent acute flares. Uh, and then number three, lower excess stores of urate to prevent flares and prevent tissue deposition of urate crystals. Hyperuricemia is commonly seen in people with gout, uh, but if you order labs and they don't have gout, they don't have any joint disease or anything else, and it's just asymptomatic high uric acid, don't treat it. Now, what are some do nots? So do not use intraarticular steroids unless septic arthritis has been ruled out. Typically, we can do that with just our regular old synovial fluid. Do not use allopurinol during acute attacks. Wait for resolution. Do not use aspirin for pain because aspirin has a tendency to raise uric acid levels and it would worsen the condition. And do not use multiple treatments at once unless the patient does not respond to one alone. 
This is the workup for monoarticular arthritis. So we kind of started here. Um, and uh, so if you've got a patient with a single joint that is painful, you want to know is there an effusion or inflammation or not. Um, so really we kind of started here. Then you do your arthrocentesis and you can pause this and print this out. I put the source on the bottom left hand here, but you can see we're really working from our synovial fluid analysis. So are there crystals? Um, what's the white count look like? Is it normal? Is it mildly elevated or is it very elevated? As you can probably imagine, if it's very elevated, it portends septic arthritis. If not, it's probably something non-inflammatory, maybe osteoarthritis. If it's bloody, that indicates trauma. If there's large fat droplets, it indicates a fracture typically around the joint will cause fat to seep into the fluid. We already checked for fractures. Okay, so that is your workup. So to recap, uh, monoarticular arthritis, the single most important test is a joint aspiration to analyze the synovial fluid. Our differential includes gout, which will show you negatively birefringent needle-shaped crystals, pseudogout, which will show you positively birefringent rhomboid-shaped crystals. Both of these crystalline arthropathies will have a mildly elevated white count in the synovial fluid. Septic arthritis will have a very elevated white count. They tend to have a high fever. These patients are often younger because Neisseria gonorrhea is a big cause of septic arthritis. Trauma, look for a history. Bloody synovial fluid. Lyme disease, also look for a history. Exposure, it's summertime, they're in the northeast, and maybe they've had a history of a rash, erythema migrans, that target-like rash. The treatment for gout, we usually start with NSAID. Steroids would be okay if the patient has failed to respond to NSAIDs or they have peptic ulcer disease. Advise regarding diet, alcohol, weight loss if applicable, admit severe cases, and then follow the patient up outpatient in one to two months and consider urate lowering therapy.